Welcome back to Cheddar Shakers, everyone. Yes, all right. This financial fitness segment is sponsored by Lending Tree. Shop and compare loans, credit cards, insurance, and more. Yes, okay. Buying a new home is likely one of the biggest purchases that an American will make in their lifetime. And when it comes to buying and the process, knowing how to successfully navigate your mortgage and research can certainly help any new homeowner feel a lot more confident come the closing time. Joining us now is Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Great to have you. Uh, look, one of the most important initial steps in the home buying process is determining how much you can afford. What kind of information do you need to gather during this process? Uh, I'll be short and political and tell you as much as you possibly can. And if you guys haven't purchased a home before, you guys that are watching, it's a fun process, but a lot of it is very taxing, especially at the very, very beginning. So yeah, knowing what you can afford boils down to multiple things, one of which is your down payment amount, but really more importantly is your monthly overhead. And I think if you don't have a sustainable amount of money, you know, accessible, it could be kind of a stressful situation. So yeah, talking to somebody that can help you coordinate your loan, whether it's a banker, whether it's a mortgage broker, at the very beginning is going to definitely be the first step that we suggest in the process. Yeah, what are lenders assessing about your financial background when you're getting your pre-approval for a mortgage? Yeah, so when you get a mortgage, it's really based on risk. And, and we all know about a thing called an interest rate, an interest rate, which obviously can slide based on the type of loan that you're getting. But they're looking for your income, right? If you've got a solid income, a salary, that's way easier to qualify someone versus someone like me, where I have multiple sources of income, but it's inconsistent. So a lot of you guys that are watching this that are in sales that want to buy your first property, you need to make sure you stay with the same job in sales for at least two years. When you do that, it gives somebody an idea of what it looks like instead of just a roller coaster. You might have some kind of steady income coming in, which is going to make you easier to go and qualify for a long or short-term loan. Uh, look, figuring out uh, you know, that you want to be, buy a home obviously is very important. And what you want specifically out of it is also important before you start the touring process. And so what are some considerations uh, that people need to craft on a home buying checklist? Yeah, so I would be very pragmatic. I would start with what you need and then keep what you want kind of on the side. But real estate's obviously always been about location. It's something that I've been preaching out for, you know, close to a decade. It's also about what's affordable. I think, so keep the location and the price point at the very top of your list. And then stuff like square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, if you need land, a school district, that kind of stuff, no matter what, you can't change it once you're there. The other stuff, it's not that big of a deal when it comes to really per picking out a property you're going to live in. There's a lot of peace. Picking out a property... You're going to live in it's the cosmetic stuff it's it's the color it's the paint it's the finish shots it's stuff that you can change while you're there so i would focus on the stuff that cannot go and be modified once you're actually living or owning the property and so what should you look for in a real estate agent the person that's going to be that big critical role in trying to help you find this new home sure so i'm one of a couple million people that do this in the country alone which means you could probably go to the coffee shop you could go to the elevator you could go to the bathroom you're going to probably statistically run into a realtor so you know, at the end of the day, I would want somebody that you can go and connect with, with, with something not to do with real estate. And when you think about it, especially if you're purchasing a home, the relationship that I have or that we have with our clients is an intimate one. And eventually, at the end of the day, you don't want to go talk about the color of the paint or what kind of carpet or how big the house is. You want to get to know them. So I would find someone you connect with that's educated and that has referral sources. And I think when you guys are interviewing realtors anywhere in the world, anywhere in the country, or even in Dallas, Texas, where we're based here, make sure they have qualifications other than just passing the real estate test. Because as you can imagine, as the real estate market does this, so do the amount of people that want to be in real estate because they think it's easy money. So yeah, just bet them out and ask for some of their references and make sure they know what they're doing. But at the end of the day too, just trust your gut and your heart and make sure you're with somebody that you actually enjoy being around. All right, Rogers Healy, owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Thanks so much for joining us as always. Thanks guys, love Cheddar. Thank you. All right, if you're thinking of buying a new home, you may be asking yourself, how much home can I afford? So head over to LendingTree.com and check out their home affordability calculator that can give you an educated guess based on your current financial situation. Yeah.